Hi, this is a, no, a sort of work in progress, really. I uh, wanted a way of getting from uh, my uh, rather skanky sketch style, which is fairly ragged. I have a fairly ragged sketch style. Certainly when I'm uh, doing my, you know, initial rough sketches, I wanted a way that I could um, make a sketch, see how it how it looked more in a more finished style than how, then I, I could take it away to Photoshop and do things and then very quickly go back and see what the change. So I could, I could do a sort of iterative thing with me messing with a sketch and bunging it through comfy and, and, and so I could make adjustments and keep on going back and, and seeing what effect they had. So I'm in comfy I can use control net with either, you know, scribble or, um, or canny, but this sort of drawing doesn't really work very well with control net. It does work. I, I, I just in you know break it into its lines and invert it. But it, it doesn't. It, it do, I don't want to have to keep on doing that to my drawing essentially. And uh, and I need to have a sort of smoother workflow to and fro. And also I don't like the way the control net leaves my drawing. At, at, at low levels it makes a horrible job of of it, and at high levels it changes it completely. So this is my original drawing, and this is what control net makes of it at quite high levels so it, it's putting quite a lot of random other stuff in I know it's, not, it's a nice image I don't dislike the image but it's miles too colorful I don't have the I don't have any control over the overall color hue and color balance so I worked out a way of doing this a different way which gives this result which is much nearer to my sketch and also the colors are a lot less and, and I changed the color of her hair obviously but uh, the uh, and and also uh, this is much more uh, responsive to prompting. So I'm going to go, uh, the way I did it was very simple and I, uh, it's not a finished thing. I think there's probably better ways of doing it that I haven't discovered and maybe if any any knowledgeable person can see uh, see uh, a better way of doing the same thing then, uh, uh, then please say so in the thing. So I'll put that away. So it starts here. Let's not move that around. So this, I put my drawing in, just just straight in. I've taken it straight out of Photoshop and dropped it in. And then I have made a series of colour adjustments here. And I'll go. I'll cue them first. There they are, uh, and they look a pretty unlikely bunch. But the, but there is a there is um, method in my madness. So my aim is to produce a, a gently noised image with a that leans towards a certain colour. And in order to do that, I have first of all we'll go down this chain first. I've colour corrected it just to give it a basic colour. And obviously I can change this colour. That's the other advantage of this method. I can I can change that to any colour I want. You know I can make it um, blue, bluish or greenish or whatever, whatever tone I want. Make it greenish or bluish or, or whatever. And that will feed through, feed, feed through and I, I can, uh, you know, give my, give my, uh, give my final generation a sort of, a, you know, a colour value that fits my intention. The other thing I need to add to this image is variation that the AI can grab hold of and transmute. So I need to add one, some other colours, and though you can't see it in this image here, I'm adding noise uh, which has colour in it. So this particular noise type here, so this is power noise, which generates noise. And then I'm blending this image with the noise, which gives this result, which is a little bit washed out. So I put it through a brightness and contrast to make this very nasty, <laughs> grungy looking image. But all this information in here, there is actually blue and stuff in there. If you'll see there's blue, blues and so on, some yellows. It, it's mostly red, but that's just for this image. So I then need to remix my original image back into it. So here's my original image, which is going across here into a colour correct just to increase contrast. I'm just increasing the contrast here and warming the image a little bit. Then I'm putting it through a colour tint. And I do, I've started to do this because I can easily change, we change to maroon. I can change the tint of my image going in with this extremely easily. Lime. Mmm. Um, and I can, and I can adjust the strength of it as well. So too much lime. It could be softer. So actually, this is rather convenient. <laughs> I decided. So I, I, I can decide exactly uh, what hue and how much of it is going in. 
and um, you'll see on, on the um, generations that makes quite a difference. So I'll go back to the original one which was we'll just have warm maybe. And then this result here which is the tinted image here gets mixed with this one. So that's a mix of this one and that one. And that produces this, which I'll zoom in on, which is just a, a, a gentle tanned and and there's variation everywhere. If you look, there's little bits of soft variation everywhere. And I found that that's enough of a hint for for the uh, model to, to grab hold of it and, and react with the prompt. So I'll just show the, uh, this is this is when I was, I was comparing, this is the canny and what it does. It, it, it really doesn't work terribly well. I, I could draw a canny map that did work terribly well, but uh, but that almost defeats the, <laughs> defeats the point of it, doesn't it? So this here is a completely standard image to image. I mean, there's nothing unusual about it in any way. The uh, denoise is set at uh, 0.6. Uh, there's a lower in here to um, to style the image because I, I need to know if it'll style. It, you know, it just produces a, a, a plain vanilla image without the LoRa, but the, the LoRa is leaning towards what I'm, my final image. And I have a very simple prompt that is badly spelled. <laughs> anyway, so there's an evil source dress, slight smile, black hair, wild hair, blue dress, dark hair, full colour. And here I've got monochrome, which rather helps actually. And uh, we don't need realistic hands, there's no hands in it. So we'll take that out. But uh, I was doing one previously that did have hands in it. So we'll prompt that and see what it does. And here she is back. Funny hairy glitch there. But other than that, it all looks good. So as you see, that a quite a nice image. The colour is restrained. Uh, it's pretty much good on the prompt. Blue dress. We haven't got a dark curtain. I could make the dark curtain uh, merely by scribbling over the background there. Uh, but it, I, I could literally just scribble over the background and uh, make it any tone I wanted. Uh, or, or, you know, add more detail into the background if I wanted. Wild hair we have, etc. And the, and the style, obviously. And it, it produces a slightly better image um, and more coherent image than the control it does. The other thing it will do is take quite um, simple images. Uh, so we'll choose another image, which as you see, is a very stylized image. I, I apologize to whoever's image it is. I, I only used it to test. Uh, I think it's an AI image and I think it's a very good one as well, but I, I don't know who it is. If, if someone is watching this who knows or it is their image, then tell me and I'll put, it, I'll put a, a credit. In the words. So the only thing you have to remember when you put a new image in is to get the power noise here to the same dimensions as your image. Otherwise it goes funky, I show you. So and what I do is I set these to never and just have a look at uh, what it do with it. So there she is. I quite fancy a blue. I think that would be rather good. So I can change my colour tint. And there she is. She has a blue grey tint. I think that would rather suit that. It's quite a nice, quite a rather Nice image. So we'll we'll put that through the mill here. So, so we'll set these to always. Uh, we probably need to adjust the prompt a little bit. I don't think we care about the curtain. The hair isn't wild anymore. The blue dress is dark. And I think the rest of it can stay the same. I might have the denoise up to 6.5 because the, the, the change required here is a little bit more. And I think that'll do. Uh, do I want to put a curtain in the background? I'm not sure I do. We'll see. And here we have her signature as well. So it's stuck very closely, you'll see, to the uh, feeling of the original image. But a really unpleasant crown on her head. I think we'd have to prompt against that hanging signature. But it's done rather a nice background, swirly background. And of course, uh, if you try and use canny with this, it, it really doesn't uh, doesn't do a great deal. It doesn't work at all, really. So it'll take quite a variety of, of images. So we'll do another one, which is um, a very drawn image, maybe. This is a <coughs> very sketch sketch. This is um, by Charles Darla Gibson. I think this one is probably more uh, of a rose image. And do we need to do the prompt? Let's see what happens. <laughs> and there she is back. So you see, it's stuck pretty much the drawing. And also, it's stuck pretty much the prompt as well. But uh, I would like a way of um, applying more obviously coloured noise, such as uh, Photoshop does, and uh, a slightly more in, in, uh, intuitive colour correct. Uh, again, more like Photoshop, which uh, uh, this is very awkward to use. Um, it does the job, but uh, I think it could it could be uh, this could all be squashed into one node. I think, but not by me, as I don't have the expertise. So here we are with some of our image pairs. The uh, drawing on the left is by Charles Darner Gibson. <laughs> 
someone has done a sort of steampunk alteration to it so I went with that and prompted for a steampunk lady and that's the resultant image with a few cogs and such and seems fine this is a, a more difficult one this is a uh, pencil drawing or a charcoal drawing probably by John Singer Sargent. <clears throat> I really didn't think it would extract an image from this, but um, it did it with no trouble at all. This was the first go, so it it, it, it it's quite happy to take quite a um, quite a variety of drawn images. This is Charles Darner Gibson again. It was an obvious choice, but it, it does interesting things with the hatching and um, and has stayed pretty pretty um, close to the uh, feeling of the original. There's a few glitches here and there, but again, this was just put in and popped out the other end. Another Charles John Gibson, but a, a more sketchy one. And again, that came out pretty well. Uh, here's a more difficult one. This again was, I put it in, this is what came out. I would change a lot of things, but for a first generation without any adjustments, I'm... I'm pretty pleased because, you know, uh, two figures is always harder than one and, uh, you know, that, that has potential to work quite well. This one, I apologise for any of these images if I've sw I've just swiped these off the internet. Some of the first ones I tried just to see if I could get it working. So this is a, this is a um, cyborg-y type lady. Again, I, I, saw, I thought this one would process fairly well, but, um, but it... it it, it, it did it with no problems at all first time. This is a slightly more um, cartoony image and it kept a little bit of the cartoony feel which I was surprised at. And it makes quite a pretty image. And I was very surprised it kept the um, decorative circle in the background because I didn't prompt for it but uh, it, put, it put it in anyway. This is the very first one I did. Uh, rather nice. I think this is an AI image. It's rather nice. I've forgotten who, who did it now. I think it's rather clever. But as you see from just a straight black and white brush drawing, essentially, it's produced a, a, a reasonable generation uh, in full colour. So that's it. I hope, I hope uh, if anyone can think up um, an improvement to the method, some of the, for example, some of the nodes to process the image, I, I could wish for a few more that are in Photoshop. So maybe some clever node Python people can... Uh, could maybe uh, produce some nodes. There's, there are some other image nodes, but they don't seem to be compatible with the current build of Comfy. Okay, thank you very much. I hope that was interesting and informative. And uh, leave feedback below if you, if you like it or, or loathe it, really. Okay, thank you.